The chain of your bike is a pretty fundamental component and if maintained and lubricated correctly, it's gonna last you a very long time. It's gonna run nice and quietly and shift gear beautifully. However, the problem is that I see lots of people inadvertently destroying the chains of their bikes, not only costing you a load of money when you have to replace it, and potentially your cassette and chain rings too, but also it's gonna cost you a few watts in drivetrain resistance. So in this video, I'm gonna dispel those problems which I see people making and also explain what it is you're actually trying to achieve when you're lubricating your chain. Right, let's get to this. So new chains can cost anywhere between 10 to 80 pounds of euros or dollars. So quite an expensive component if you need to replace it. If, however, you leave your chain worn out for a prolonged period of time, it's also gonna wear out your cassette and chain rings too, meaning your repair bill could quite easily double. So what is the first mistake that I commonly see people making? Well, that is applying new chain loop on top of existing old dirty chain loop. Effectively, you're gonna create a giant grinding paste wearing away with all the grit and dirt inside of it on your chain, wearing away at the inner surfaces on the chain links, pins and rollers. Now this new chain loop, as good as it is, it isn't gonna work as magic and just replace the old worn out dirty chain loop with the new stuff. You're just gonna end up with a big gunky mess all over your chain. The most important thing to do is simply clean, degrease, and dry your chain before you put just one drop of your new chain loop onto every single roller. And then, don't forget, wipe off the excess as well. Next mistake I see people making is lubricating their cassette. Let me get this clear. Your cassette does not need any lubrication applied to it whatsoever. Any wear which is caused to your cassette is going to be from a chain which is worn and not meshing correctly with the teeth or from changing gear when you're pedaling under load and that's going to take the edges of the teeth off. Simply dousing oil all over your cassette is just going to make dirt and grime attracted to your cassette. It's going to make everything turn into a right old mess and like I said previously, it's going to create a big grinding paste to create accelerated wear all over your other components. The same can be said for your chain rings too. Simply by lubricating your chain correctly with the minimal amount of oil, a small amount is going to work its way onto the cassette and chain rings anyway, but there's certainly no need to put more on there and create a big mess. People who use too much chain lubricant are going to be almost just as bad as people that don't use any at all. Now, coating your chain and just dousing it in loads and loads of your fancy chain lube or oil is not only going to create a big sticky mess for all of your bike and chain, pretty much magnetizing any bit of dirt onto it, which then is going to cause a big grinding pace and accelerate the wear and friction within the chain, it's also going to cost you more money on the basis of your fancy pants chain lube that you're using all the time, you're just gonna use loads more of it than what you actually need to do. So back to our original principle, if you need to lubricate your chain, one drop per roller, pedal the cranks backwards a few times and then wipe off that excess. Fourth common mistake I see people making is not using a product designed for the job. So it feels a little bit more like common sense this one really, but using a thick grease or a super thin lubricant spray to lubricate a chain is just not going to cut it really. There's a reason that products have been designed specifically to go onto your chain and that's because they'll work better than a product which isn't designed for that. So in that instance, stick to using chain lubes specifically designed for that purpose. I mean, there's a whole plethora of them out there. You can choose whichever one suits your type of ride in the conditions that you ride in best and save that old tin of DIY three-in-one oil for, well, like it says on the tin, DIY job. And then final mistake I see people commonly making is going out riding for hour after hour after hour with a chain which is rattling, squeaking and making loads of horrible noises because there is no lubrication on there whatsoever. There's just fresh air running between the links, the pins 
and the rollers. And it's almost as bad as those that have too much oil and loads of grit and grime in there, which is going to accelerate wear even further. Now, to get onto how to combat that, well, in a second, I'll explain what it is we're actually trying to achieve by taking a closer look inside this chain, which I've kindly taken apart and ready so we can see inside. All right, let's do that next. So the main goal when you're lubricating your chain is to reduce the friction and therefore wear between the inner surfaces that are in contact with each other, between the pins, the links on the inner surface, the rollers, and the inner surface of the outer links. Any of the external surfaces that you can see on your chain like this, generally, we don't need to lubricate. All we do if we put lubrication on them it just attracts more dirt in there. Now, the wear and the friction that occurs on these inner components to your chain is mostly predominantly going to be found when the chain is under load, so when you're pedaling, on that top surface between the chain ring and where it goes around the cassette. As the chain articulates around those components, the links and the pins will bend. Therefore, you've got that little bit of movement, and that is where your wear is going to occur. Now, obviously, as the chain runs its way around through the pulley wheels as well, it is going to be articulating, but it's under very little load. Therefore, the wear is going to be minimal. So this is a section I've removed from a complete chain, and it's brand new. And then from that section, I've taken even more of it apart so that I can remove sections of the outer links and then get access to the inner links and the roller so I can see really clearly and show you where it is that we need to lubricate. Now to take this chain apart or to take the chain off of your bike, you're going to need to use something like this. It's a chain tool and it is used to drive the pins out of the side links. Now this one is actually super robust, it's from Park Tools. Best thing about all the Park Tools is they've got some really funky unique code names. This one is the CT 3.3, like that. So. If we take a close look in here, you have to come in super tight, right? So the areas of our chain where we want our lubricant to be, this is one that I've taken apart. So we've got the inner links and the rollers separate from the rest of the chain. So the first point that goes on here is you can see where the inner link would contact with these outer links, just around here. So what I'll do is I'll put this inner link on. There we go. So this is the first point, so if we look close here, you can see this is where the one of the inner links sit. So the first points of wear and resistance where your lubricant needs to be. You can also see where the inner link is contacting with the pin. So as the chain articulates, you can see that's where that friction comes from. Now on top of those inner links, on the inner surface of our chains, we'll have two rollers. This is what they'll look like. And you can see they sit on this little raised edge on the inner link here. So the rollers at no point contact directly with the pins. They sit on this ever so slightly raised shoulder of the inner link. So again, that's the contact point between the two different parts, and that's where your lubricant needs to be. Now if I turn this chain, you can see we've got this space round the pin and that inner roller. And inside there is where we really want to get all of our lubrication to be, because that is going to contact all of the different points that we want to reduce that friction on. And then on top of there, well, this is our other inner link, and it sits over these pins here. There we go. So you can see now that is what our chain looks like with just the outer link missing. So this outer link will sit over the top. And that will create a, a complete chain link area. Now, as I mentioned, all of those little contact points in there are where we want our lubricant to be. And when we ref refer to the term of a stretch chain, at no point is the distance between the pins throughout the chain changing. The links aren't stretching and getting any greater or further distance apart. What's actually happening is on this inner surface, the inner edge of the inner links and the rollers are wearing on the inner surface, given the effect that the rollers are sitting further apart from each other. And that is what's going to cause your chain to not mesh correctly with your chain rings and cassette, not actually the fact that anyone's strong enough to stretch a metal chain. So getting lubrication into these areas and keeping it there is the main goal we're trying to achieve. And when you take this into account, you can see why the advantages of using a wax-based system come into play. Because it's applied 
in a thin liquid state, it works its way into all of the gaps and areas where we want it to stay. As it then dries and cures into more of a solid, it's going to stay in place. And then over time, as we're riding our bike and the pressure is put through the chain, it's gradually, over a prolonged period of time, going to force little sections of the wax to be driven out from in between those rollers and the links and the pins. This, in effect, will keep the chain lubricated for longer. And also, as small portions of the wax are driven out of the chain through the pressure of riding, it will also kind of give it a self-cleaning effect because the excess wax will break off and with it, it will take a little bit of that dirt and grime that's worked its way onto your chain, which is kind of pretty clever stuff, eh? So a wax such as this, which is in a hard state and then has to be heated and melted to be applied to your chain and then left to cure to form a more solid wax again, you can see why this kind of becomes quite an attractive prospect. However, there is a very different process to using um, a product such as this and applying it onto your chain. You've got to heat it up, go through lots of different cleaning stages. And Ollie is actually going to make an in-depth video explaining the exact process to go through to use a product such as this. So if you want to see how that goes, because it sounds like it could be for you, well, subscribe to GCN Tech to make sure you don't miss on that in the future. Now, in summary, what are we trying to achieve? Well, we need to get lubrication of whatever type you choose to use into those inner surfaces of the chain link to try and keep dirt out as best as possible. We want to keep the outer surfaces of our chain as clean and free from loads of lubrication that's going to attract dirt to it. And in essence, by doing that, you're going to make your chain run smoother, less friction, it's going to have less wear to it, it's going to last longer, which is going to save you money. Now, how long is this chain lubrication going to last? I might hear you ask. Well, that is the magic question because that is going to depend on the type of lubricant that you use, the type of conditions you ride in, and how good a job you do of cleaning and lubricating your chain in the first place. It could be anywhere from 200 kilometers all the way up to 800 kilometers, maybe even more in some of the best conditions. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. There's quite a lot of information to it, but lubricating a chain is definitely something that is going to be key to good bike maintenance and saving you money. If you have enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments section down below, and also let me know what type of chain lubricant you choose to use. And of course, subscribe to GCN Tech to don't miss out on future maintenance videos just like this. Right, I'm out of here. Got to tidy this mess up. See you later.